Hello everyone, this is Munisa. I welcome you all to my class. Today we will be having a look at IS2, that is International Accounting Standard Number 2 Inventories. So let us start our discussion by having a look at the definition of inventories provided to us by IS2 itself. As per IS2, inventories are assets that are held for sale in the ordinary course of the business. If you are purchasing anything for the purpose of resale, you can consider it as your inventory. But you need to be careful that if you are selling anything occasionally, it cannot be considered as your inventory as per IS2 guidelines. Then IS2 tells us that inventories are assets that are in the process of production for the purpose of sale. And this simply applies to the manufacturing concern who do purchase raw material so that they can process them to convert them into the finished goods and later those items, those finished goods can be sold in order to earn profit. So those items which are in the process of production, basically work in progress, can be considered as an inventory as per the guidelines of IS2. Then IS2 tells us that inventories are assets that are in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. And this again basically applies to the manufacturing concerns who are purchasing raw materials or using the supplies in the production process. They can consider those materials and supplies which they are consuming in the production process as per the requirements of IS2. So for classifying the inventories basically, we should focus on their purpose. As we can see that inventories consist of goods purchased for resale, any kind of consumable stores, raw materials and components which are being used in the production process, or any kind of partly finished goods that is basically work in progress, or finished goods. These are the goods which are converted, processed, and manufactured by the business for the purpose of selling and earning profit. So on all of these items, IS2 needs to be applied because these are inventories as per the guidelines of IS2. Now let us have a look at the recognition of inventories in our books of accounts. How are we going to recognize them in our books of accounts and basically in our financial statements? Basically, inventory is only recorded in the ledger accounts at the end of an accounting period which means that during the year, the relevant sales and purchases are recorded, but increase and decrease in inventory assets is ignored. The movement of inventory is only considered on an annual basis. And in this way, a business can calculate exactly how much inventory it has used in the year to calculate cost of sales. This can remind you basically of the matching concept which states that the related revenues and expenses must be matched in the same year. If you can have a look at the standard performer for calculating sales, cost of sales and gross profit, you can have a look at this. I have taken this uh, performer from ACCFA book, but this is a general one. You can find it anywhere. This one is the part of statement of profit or loss of manufacturing organizations. If you can see that we are deducting cost of sales from the revenue figure in order to generate the figure of the gross profit. And while generating the figure of cost of sales, we have to consider inventories. Let us consider an example to understand this. Suppose there is a business entity which have some items of inventory left over from the previous year. It adds to this by purchasing more inventories for the year ahead. It then uses this pool of inventory to manufacture its products, which it is going to sell to generate sales revenue. And at the end of the year, there is likely to be some inventory left over to sustain the business in the future. This is a normal course of action which might be followed by all of the manufacturing concerns. So when calculating the gross profit, what we have to do, we do have to match the revenue generated from the sales of the good in the year with the cost of manufacturing those goods. And why are we doing this? This is because the cost of the unused inventories should not be included in this figure. 
these costs are carried forward into the next accounting period where they will be used to manufacture goods that are sold in that period and this is purely as per the matching concept we have to recognize we have to recognize the revenues and expenses in the same year now there are some year end adjustments related to the inventory which you need to consider because we are not considering the movement of inventory during a year only at the end of the year we have to consider it so it's necessary that we should be knowing that to which year end adjustments we have to make in order to consider the movements in the inventory at the end of the year the two basic adjustments are required to recognize opening and closing inventories in the correct place number 1 for opening inventory inventory brought forward from the previous year is assumed to have been used to generate assets for sale and it's most be removed from the inventory assets and recognized as an expense in the year that is why you can see that opening inventory is added to the purchases it is increasing our cost of sales the opening inventory is increasing our cost of sales and why are we doing this basically why are we doing this because inventory brought from from the previous year is assumed to have been used to generate assets for the sales and the journal entry which you have to pass in this regard is to debit opening inventory the cost of sales and credit inventory assets we are crediting inventory assets to show the decrease in asset and we are debiting cost of sales in order to show an increase in expense this is a basic rule of accounting then number 2 closing inventory the unused inventory at the end of the year is removed from the purchase costs and is carried forward as an asset into the next year that is why we do deduct the closing inventory from our cost of sales the closing inventory shows a decrease in the cost of sales and with journal entry we do need to pass for that we have to debit inventory assets and credit inventory in cost of sales credit inventory in cost of sales means that we are decreasing expense that is why we are crediting it and when we are debiting inventory asset it means that we are showing our asset increase and you do know better that in our statement of financial position also we do have to show our closing inventory as our current asset now let us have a look at the measurement of inventories well the basic measurement rule is to measure inventories at lower of cost and net realizable value there are only two exceptions or two types of inventories to which this rule does not apply number 1 producers of agricultural forest products minerals and mineral products because they will be measuring their inventory at net realizable value basically and on number 2 commodity dealers and brokers because they will be measuring their inventories at fair value less cost of sale and apart from these exceptions almost all of the organizations are going to apply this measurement rule of measuring their inventories at lower of cost and net realizable value now let us have a look at the cost of inventories first my dear students basically cost of the inventories consist of three items number 1 cost of purchase and here we do include a purchase price any kind of import duties non refundable taxes minus trade discounts and any similar nature items then on number 2 we have to include the conversion costs in the cost of an inventory and these conversion costs are directly related to the units of production 
like direct material, direct labors, and also production overheads, which are allocated on the systematic basis. Then as per IS2 requirements, we have to include some other costs also in the cost of the inventory. But we have to include only those other costs which are incurred to bring the inventory to its present condition and location. And there are some items of cost which are not allowed to be taken to the cost of an inventory. We do have to exclude them from the cost of an inventory. That is abnormal loss related to the material labor and any kind of other cost. Then storage costs. But if you need to store some work in progress before further production stage, then yes, you can include it to the cost. Admin costs, for example, general admin costs, uh, general like accounting department costs need to be excluded from the cost of an inventory. They shall not be included in the cost of an inventory. And any kind of selling costs will also not be included in the cost of an inventory. They have to be excluded completely as per the guidelines of IS2. Now, IS2 permits some certain measurement techniques in order to measure cost, two techniques are being allowed to us by IS2. Well, it's simply a method to approximate cost of inventories for convenience. And these techniques are used when the items are small and large in quantities. And it would be very impractical and difficult to set the unit cost. IS2 permits us two measurement techniques, as I've told you. These two measurement techniques are standard cost and retail method. My dear students, under standard cost, instead of calculating the real cost of inventories, we use the standard cost set by some calculation or cost card or something similar. And this method is mostly used by the producers of large amount of small items. And on the other hand, retail method, it is often used by retailers, wholesalers, who have large turnover of similar profit margins. For example, grocery stores, as being the retailers, they do use this retail method. And the cost of inventory is calculated as selling price plus profit margin. So these are basically the two cost measurement techniques which are allowed to us by IS2 inventories. Now let us have a look at the cost formulas. Sometimes we buy the same inventories at different prices. And when we sell them, we need to recognize an expense in our profit or loss statement. But how much expense do we need to recognize? Well, it purely depends upon two basic things. Number one, whether the inventories are not interchangeable and are the goods or services produced are segregated for specific projects? If yes, then we need to recognize these inventories in cost of sales at specific costs because the inventories are not interchangeable. They are clearly distinguishable. We cannot use them on any other project. In that case, we have to use specific costs. Well, on the other hand, if the inventories are interchangeable, which means that they are not distinguishable and the products and the services are not produced and segregated for the specific projects, they are not being produced to be used on only a specific projects, but they can be used for all of the uh, usage in the organization. Then in that case, what we have to do, we can use either FIFO, that is first in first out method or weighted average cost method. These are the methods which are allowed to us by ISU. And you have to consider one more point over here that there is one more method of the inventory valuation, which is last in first out method, LIFO. This LIFO method is not allowed as per international financial reporting standards. In US GAAP, 
we do use it, but as per the requirements of IFRS, we are not allowed to use that method. Now, as far as uh, FIFO method is concerned, its detailed application can be found in my YouTube channel. And I have included some practice material also for your help. But generally, what is first in first out method, it is applied to the inventory on the basis of first one received would be assumed to be sold first. Cost of closing inventory is the cost of most recent purchase of inventory. This is a basic method which we can adopt when we are using FIFO method. On the other hand, when we are using FCO, which is average cost method for the measurement of inventory, the cost of an item is calculated by taking the average of all inventory held. Average cost can be calculated periodically or continuously. And the details of these uh, periodic and continuous calculation you can found, find in my YouTube channel. And the details of the specific cost we have already discussed. And the specific cost method is basically used for the items of inventory which are produced and segregated for these specific projects. And for these items, we are going to use the actual cost of purchasing. The items are clearly distinguishable. We cannot use them on any other project in the organization. Now, let us have a look at the net realizable value. As I've told you, the basic measurement technique for the inventory is lower of cost and NRV, net realizable value. We have discussed in detail about the cost of an inventory. Now it's time to discuss NRV, that is net realizable value. My dear students, net realizable value is fair value less further cost to sell. Or we can say that it is estimated selling price in the ordinary course of the business minus estimated cost of completion minus estimated selling costs necessary to make a sale. And we do need to make sure that inventories in the financial statements are not stated above this NRV. So if NRV is less than cost, then we need to write down the inventories to their NRV in the period when this loss has occurred. And the journal entry for recognizing this is basically debit cost of sales and credit inventory, which is showing basically a loss. Credit inventory means that we are showing a loss in the value of an inventory. We are decreasing it. Now, standard IS2 does not specify to separately present this loss from the cost of sales, but sufficient disclosures should be provided. If there is a reversal of any written down value due to an increase in NRV, then we should recognize it as a reduction in the amount of inventories recognized as an expense in the period in which the reversal occurs. And simply, we are going to reverse the previously passed journal entry for writing off the inventory. The journal entry for the reversal would be debit, inventories, and credit would be cost of sales. So my dear students, this is all for today. We have successfully completed our discussion regarding IS2. The practice material can be found on my channel. And if you do need to ask any questions, you are most welcome to ask. You can simply put your questions in the comment box. And for practice, as I've told you, you can visit my channel. Thank you so much for listening. Take a good care of yourself. Thank you so much.